Okay, so we're, we're starting the stream. Uh, usually crashes right about now. And then restarts again, so we'll just see what happens. I've got the chat up on here in case anybody joins. So, yeah. Mute that. Don't need to hear that. <clears throat> so I'm just going to open up the creation kit. We're opening up the creation kit now. This tutorial is going to be specifically about a couple of like specific areas and I've got them I've got them up here. While that's loading. Um we're gonna be talking about script fragments. We're gonna be talking about interconnectivity between scripts, so joining two scripts together, or accessing files from another mod using scripts. And we're going to be looking at doing hookups as well. So we have a few examples set out ready to go for that. And yeah, we're just going to get started basically. I think I've got everything ready. I have a cup of tea at hand ready to go. And nobody is quite yet in the video. So we'll just wait for a few people to show up. I'll just have a little mess around with my script here. There we go. So I've set up a couple of test ESP files for us to use. One I've set up with a, uh, an example script, which has just got an integer property, which we're going to access from another mod, which I'm going to show you now. So I've basically created two identical ESP files with a test cell, and one of them will have a file in there that you can uh, activate, and it will bring up the script value from the other mod. So let's hope it's pretty straightforward. It should be. We should be okay. Cheers. So, interconnectivity with scripts is quite a handy tool to have. Not just with accessing variables and properties from other scripts in other mods, but also within your own scripts and mods as well. It comes, comes in handy. I myself, with one of my main mods, which is Hunting in Skyrim, there is a quest that has about 10 scripts attached to it, which are all sort of interconnected between each other. And they all talk to each other and all reference things from each other's scripts. Now, the creation kit has had the, has been crashing a lot recently, for some reason, just randomly, after using it for a while, not doing anything intensive. So I have a test cell here that has an activator here with a script attached to it and it has one property and nothing else it just has an integer property integer property some integer auto uh, this tutorial isn't going to be basic scripting I'm gonna be assuming that you already know how to do some basic scripting and how properties work and all that sorts of stuff <clears throat> uh, but as you can see I've set the sum integer value to 5 in this mod bbd test scripting 01.esp so this mod has that object which has a value of 5 on it. So now what we want to do is set up another mod that looks to that activator to try and get that value. So say for example you wanted uh, you wanted to know if the if the player was using frostfall as a mod for example. Say you wanted to get the the user's exposure value. Well this would be a way to do that. Not specifically because I'm using an object reference but hopefully you'll get the idea. So in my second mod I have the same test cell but different names and then 
I'm going to add a script to an object which will talk to that activator which we've um, we've set up there. So I'll just load that up now. Creation kit's quite slow, especially when you're you're opening up a lot, a lot of stuff and you don't have a solid state drive. Just a quick pro tip for you, it helps the creation kit start slower depending on what screen you're on. If you've got static selected here and you load up the ESEM, ESM files, it takes a little longer. So I always just throw a couple of things in the filter there so that it doesn't try to load all the things in that window. So we'll open up my test file there. And we'll just let this load up. Now, just a quick tip for anyone. Uh, I would recommend using an external script editor if you're going to do any sort of major scripting work. If you're just doing a tiny script uh, with a little uh, unactivate event or something like that small, then the Creation Kit script editor is fine. But once you start going into more in-depth scripting, then I'd suggest using something like Sublime Text or Notepad+. Plus. This is Sublime Text here. As you can see, it highlights things. It's called syntax highlighting. It highlights words that are properties or script values there. And it just makes things a lot easier to read, basically. So this is one of a script this is one of the scripts that I'm using for my trapping script. As you can see, it's quite long. And people are wondering why it's taken so long to do this. There's about seven scripts involved, and this is one of them as well. This is a very, 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 very long script. It takes a lot of effort. So this uh, creation kit's just loading up now. You always get a load of errors at the start. So we'll just go past that. Here we go. Now I've already set up on a notepad here the script that which we're going to use already, but this can be found on the creation kit wiki page as well, which is a very valuable resource if you're a modder at all no matter what stage you're at within your modding whether you're just starting out or whether you've already had a few published mods the wiki page is a perfect place to go for all of your scripting needs it teaches you about uh, arrays and properties and how variables work and floating point and all sorts of weird stuff so let's go to our second test cell here Just to denote that we're using this as the object to uh, get the information from the other object. I've put a little knife here. So let's just go back to our other window here. We can see that this object in this mod, um, BBD Test Scripting 01, has a script on it with a value of 5 as the integer. Now, say we're making a mod and we know that people use this other mod or might use this other mod. The way we find out not only if they are using the mod or and uh, get the information, you use the same method. You use game dot get form from file. This here. That is a very important function. That's the one you use to get the information from another mod. Now you can use that to not only get the an object, you can use it to get script variables that are attached to objects from that mod. Uh, to give you an example of just a basic way of doing it, say so there was a mod out there called My Cool Sword, and it gave the player a really cool sword to use in the game. You might want to be able to let your users in your mod get that sword, um, and you might want to maybe use it as a quest item, or you might just want to put it in a chest somewhere. But you don't want to use that other mod as a master. That's what this is trying to avoid. So you can just set your mod up to use the other mod as a master file, so that your mod only works with that mod, but that's not always ideal. So this is the way you do it so that you don't always have to um, have the mod as a master file, basically. So we use get form from file. So the first thing we need to do, now you can do this in a number of ways. Uh, we need to get the form ID of the object that has the script attached that we want to look at. Now you can use the creation kit to do that. You can open the creation kit up and get the form ID. Or you can use um, TES5 edit or the Elder Scrolls 5 edit. That will also get the form ID as well. So let's go to our scripting 01 mod. This is the object that we want to get the information for. Put my phone over there. So first of all, we need to get the object that this script is attached to. So this script is attached to this object. Now, just for um, 
you know, for the sake of it, this script could be attached to multiple objects. So we want to make sure we get the right object that we want to look at first. So it's this test shrine 01. And that's the form ID there. The 02 is the load order number. This is the form ID. So we write down that number like so. Um, just get my notepad up. So it's 02000D73. And I've already written the ESP name in there. Now let me just quickly explain what we're doing here. On its own, this function just looks like this. It's game.getform from file. This number is the form ID you want to find, and this is the name of the ESP file that you want to find it from. Now, how you get that information that you're looking for depends on what it is you're trying to cast it as. Because as you know, in scripting, you need to cast an item in order to be able to see it in your script. So in this instance, we're going to cast this object as an object reference. As in, it's an object that is placed within the world, and we're looking at that specific reference in the world. If that was a quest, then you'd use quest. Or if it was a weapon, you'd use weapon. But if it's something in the world that you can see in the world, and you want to look at it in the world, then you'd use object reference. That's the ideal way. Unless you wanted to get it from the base object, which is a different thing. So, for example, quest is, is a base object. You can't really get a quest in the world. But the other objects do have things that are also base objects. So... Like, for example, this is an activator. If the script was attached to the activator object and you wanted to look at the base object, then you'd cast it as activator. In this instance, it's an object reference within the world itself, so we're going to cast it as object reference. Now, to cast, you need to first declare what it is you're going to cast. So we're looking at an object reference. So it's an object reference, and then we need to give it a name, a property name that we're going to use to uh, as a temporary variable, because this is going to be a temporary variable. So we're going to call it k object ref, and then we want to tell the uh, the script and the engine what our new k object ref object reference is. So we point it to this file. So we use equals like that game dot get form from file and there. Now it's important to note that the creation kit denotes this O2 based on load order. That O2 isn't relevant to this because it's the second in the load order within the creation kit but it won't be the second mod in the load order in the user's game it's only really these ones we're looking for so we just this is the way I do it anyway we count how many numbers are there so we go one two three four five six so there's six digits there or letters uh, we've got three zeros and then d73 so I just count backwards and delete from the uh, from the example script that you get from the uh, creation kit wiki so we delete six one two three four five six and then just paste those six numbers there like that and that should work let me just check up here one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight so there we go so we're telling the script that we're creating a new object reference or we want to look at an object reference we're going to give it the name k object ref and we're going to tell it what it is so it's get form from file so we're saying get that form id from that mod which in this instance points to this specific activator here let me just get that back up like so and then you need to tell it uh, you need to also add the as object reference at the end because it might not be an object reference so we call it we say as object reference so we have that there so we can just delete that there now let's just get the name of this property so we want to find out what some int is so in mod a it has a property called some int and we, we want to know in our mod what the, the sum int property is in the other mod if the user's using it. So you do it like this. We need to get the name of the script. Like this. 
you watch me forget now, now that I'm on the spot. So that is a property in that script on that object. So we do it like this. Yeah, let's hope we do this right now. And then, hold on, let me just get my script up here. Okay. So to begin with, the name of the script comes first, and then on the spot now, let me just have a swig of tea. Do you know when you do something so many times and then and then it just goes. First of all, let's just set up the script on our object like this. So we're going to create a new script on this activator. What we're going to do just for the testing purposes is just bring up a message box that pops up with whatever the value is of that property, like this. Please don't crash. I have got the chat open as well if you want to ask any questions or whatever. So we're just going to call it test get script thing. Why not? And what I like to do is just when I've created the script, just click OK. Save it. And then go in and change the things. So we're going to set up an event in here. I'm going to assume you understand events, so I'm just going to write one out now. We want to know when the we want to bring up the number of that thing when the player activates this object. So we do event on activate object reference. I like to capitalize the R. AK action ref. Um, for the purpose of this, we'll just sit, make sure that it is the player activating it. You, you do safeguards in scripting like that all the time. We'll, we'll do it for here. So if um, ak action ref equals game dot get player, and if and event should compile. Yay. Message box. And we're going to print out that integer. So we're going to declare it here. There's a lot of ways you can go around declaring stuff beforehand or you can shorten it and stuff. I'm just going to do it this way, but there are there's more than one way to skin a cat. So we'll do integer sum int property. We're just going to declare it like that number equals plus some integer property um, plus some integer property so that's how you write the message box to include a number or whatever <coughs> so we've got the script here Put that in this. So we don't want to do anything unless it's the player. So we'll first declare that k object ref is that object there. Okay, we're in the right mod. And we want to get this. Um, mod script equals. Let me just double check that's right, and I'll explain it in a minute. I've got one of these set up down here somewhere, where it's a load of functions that gets the script attached to the object. Yeah, so it's basically it's very similar to casting, uh, casting an object. You cast it as the script once you know the uh, the object reference. So I'll just paste this as an example. This is just an example of one of my scripts. like so. So we want the name of the script, like that. So we know the name of the script already, and um, the actual name of the script as well. And then what we want to call it, and then we have the object that it is attached to as an object reference, and then you cast it 
as and then the, the actual name of the script again back and forth it's very very similar to the uh, game.get form from file so we want the, the name of the script and we're calling it mod script equals uh, k object ref as object reference and then as the name of the script again uh, the chat is there if you want to ask any questions now for quickness we can actually just completely double cast everything I think that's the, the right way to say it and just get the number and put it in there straight from the uh, from that so that we don't have to worry about casting it and all that sort of stuff um, if we put it here like that so we've got the object I'll just leave an enter and then the script attached to that object now just for safety if we save this it should compile fine yeah no errors and then this works in exactly the same way as you would with your own script properties now how do we get that some integer property to look to the integer in that value it's very simple we know that it's called some int we know it has the name some int so we do our integer property equals and then we do the name of the script that we're calling it so mod script dot and then the name of the property that's attached to that script um, because you're double casting like this it shouldn't ask you to uh, it shouldn't error and say that it can't find the script file shouldn't anyway um, if it does as long as your script's right it should work you know just do some tests if you were getting the name of the script as a property like in this example up here where you're or it's one of your own scripts and you're casting it in already there's an example there you go so it says hunting and sky and region detection quest script property region detection auto so when you're doing it like that when you're predetermining it as a property in your script then you will need to fill it with something and it will need to know where that script is on your system it will need to be in your script file but because in this mod we're looking for it with a script we don't want to know uh, we, d we don't want to access it directly because it's not in our file this is how we do it so I'll just go th run through these dead quickly so we're, what we're saying is um, if the player activates this object just a quick T so we're saying if the player activates this object that we're looking at now first of all we want to get the object reference from that mod that we want to get the script from we get the script that it's called so we know the script name and the instance of the script which is very important we're looking at that script instance as it is in that game on that object we're not just looking for that script in general because that in general on the computer that script has no property uh, no, no value attached to that property it's only attached in the creation kit in the game so we've got the mod script we've called it and then some integer so I'm gonna save that and we're gonna go and test it out now in theory when we activate that activator now it should pop up say and, and say five that's what it should say so we want to just get this test cell script test cell 02 and let's um, start Skyrim I've set it so that it plays in a window I've never streamed with all these different things open and and the window open and all that so fingers crossed it doesn't crash it might be, it might be quite loud actually as well turn your volume down okay it's not too bad okay so let's just um, COC straight to there so what's it called again it's called script test cell 02 COC script test cell 02 fingers crossed Here we go. Um, now this cell here is the one that we've set up with our own script on it that's going to do some funky stuff and it's going to look at the other activator in the other mod so when I press E on this it should pop up say 5 number equals 0. Why? Why do you think it says 0? Let's find out. You can't save it while it's on. Um, okay. 
Now this is a good example of looking out for um, mod problems. So we need to solve a problem now. We need to know why it's coming up as zero. And I'm going to show you how to look up and find problems. That's what I'm going to do now. Because this will come up, you see. And you need to know how to find problems. So it comes up saying zero, which tells us that when it gets to here, it can't find that. It just can't find it. So we need to know why. <clears throat> Test script twitch01. So the script name is right. So let's look. Why isn't it coming up? So the way I do my problem, so, uh, problem solving and trying to find where there's a bug within a line of code is to run a debug message box system just for everyone to see where a value doesn't show through. So this is how I do my system. So what we'll do is we'll set up a message box that shows up what the object reference is as soon as it's been declared and it will say none if it can't find one and then we'll set up a message box to show that it's found the script just save that should compile So let's do this. You'll spend a lot of your time debugging. I was going to say when you get into more advanced stuff, but it's generally any time. You'll spend a lot of time debugging. One of the one of the a great feeling is coming to a mod and. Um, like after you've worked on maybe let's say hours of code and you've been coding and stuff you, and you test it in game and it works first time that's a great feeling so the test cell is script test cell 02 coc script um, test cell 02 alright so let's see what happens now Object reference is none. So it can't find the object reference. I wonder why that is. So it's something with my code. So let's find out what. It's almost as if that mod isn't loaded. Let me just check Nexus Mod Manager and make sure that mod's loaded. It'll tell me it's out of date, but I'm not updating it yet because I'm not playing through me mods right now. Okay, so the mod is there. BBD test scripting 01. Have I spelt it right? Yep. It just can't find that. Do you know why? <laughs> this is why. I've used the form ID <coughs> excuse me for the um, <clears throat> the base object so I'm looking for the form ID of the uh, of the base object not the activator see 73 base object that's an easy mistake to make and it's a rookie mistake as well I'll kick myself for that so it's 74 D74 and I'm so confident in that I'm gonna take away my debugs 
That's how confident I am that that's going to be the thing. There you go. So there's a there's a tip for you. Something I should have remembered is there. Uh, make sure you're getting the right form ID. That will help. Let's load up Skyrim testing game and it will work. Fine. Spot on. It's very fun, um, Skyrim modding. It's very fun. Scripting is very fun as well. Once you can sort of get the hang of it. Uh, script test cell O2. Especially when you can when you start getting into more advanced things like working with arrays and um, and things like that. You sort of it's you feel proud of yourself. So if I do this, it should go five. There you go works so now if say this is your mod and you know that users some use, use some other cool mod say frostfall and you wanted to get frostfall's uh, exposure value you'd find out where that's stored on uh, on the object or whatever use the method that I've shown and um, there you go five so that's that that's interconnecting scripts from other mods and getting the value now it's very it's very easy to, to to extend this, and I'll I'll show you one way of extending this to other things, and then you can sort of make up things for yourself as you go along. What we'll do is use a weapon as an example and do some other funky stuff. So in this mod, we'll create a weapon. Iron dagger. Where are we? And we'll place that. So Iron Dagger there, we'll just duplicate it, call it Iron Dagger, um, cool, level one, and we'll just give it whatever value of lots. I don't think that does anything, so let's just leave that as one. Where's the damage? Where's the damage? Damage per second. Handed. Let's do it as ways zero and does fifty damage. So we know that in this mod it has a cool dagger called Iron Dagger Cool O One. Quickly save that. Now in this instance we're not going to attach that to the world. We're just going to leave it there because in your mod you won't know if that is in the world somewhere unless you do know for sure it is. But you don't want to. Uh, you don't want to go to that place in the world to get it. You want to go um, in your script, get the base object. So we'll just copy the name and paste it in our little script here, like that. And we'll get the form ID, which is zero zero one eight three nine. Zero zero one eight three nine. One two three four five six. Zero zero one eight three nine. Is that right? Yeah. Two four six one eight three nine zero zero one eight three nine again count backwards in this example what we want to now do is get rid of all this in fact no just in case we need it for later we'll comment it out and we'll do a new stuff now this is a weapon so we just change object reference to weapon and it should all work the same and I like to leave a little comment and just say cool iron dagger or whatever just in case I leave the script for six months come back and then I can see what it is so we know that that's the cool iron dagger and we want to do game dot um, get player that's obviously the slow way you'd want to use the player ref property but we'll just do it for this example game dot player dot add item one and just to distinguish really quick quickly we'll call this cool iron dagger in the game so that we can see that it's actually called cool iron dagger and then we'll test this in game and it'll work fine again.
Now there's a lot of uses for this as you can see. You don't just uh, you don't just have a couple of things that you can do with this. You can literally accomplish almost anything now. You can literally accomplish anything. You can not only get the information from things from other mods, you can also change other things in other mods if, if that's what you need to do. Um, so um, obviously you wouldn't want to do this, but say you wanted to change the exposure level of your, of your character in Frostfall uh, as another mod or whatever, you could, um, instead of getting the value of the object, you'd set the value, which you sh I won't show you how to do because it's just like, uh, it's basic scripting, setting a value, but rather than do displaying it, you'd set it to whatever you want to pull from or change to. So I will do a quick example of that in a bit, just really quickly. So we'll just uh, script test cell. That's probably quite loud for you, isn't it? I've got my uh, headphones low. So now on this on this time, when we activate this uh, activator here, we should be given the dagger. So let's see what happens. I heard it. I heard something. Cool iron dagger. There you go. So that cool iron dagger has now been added to our inventory from the other mod. So what do you do if it's optional? That's something else that comes up. First of all, I'll just show you quickly how to do um, how to set a value instead of just displaying it. So what you'd do is you'd do this in reverse. So you'd do mod script dot sum int. So you're getting the value of the integer and you're setting it to let's say four. So what that'll do once you've got the the name of the object in the script is it would set that value on that script in the other mod to whatever you set it as. Yeah, so we've seen that in practice and, and that works quite well. Now what we want to do is do it as an optional thing. Now I think that script, if that mod wasn't, uh, wasn't found, it might um, or it probably will do a papyrus log error which a lot of mod users don't really understand the meaning of. They think it's like errors and they complain to modders saying oh it's got loads of these papyrus errors. Um, they're not necessarily errors in the, in the sense that your mod is broken. They're just in, it's just information to say the engine is having problems with this script or this value isn't there or something like that. A lot of things have a papyrus error that can't be avoided. A lot of them can be avoided, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Do try and minimize it, but there will be times, <clears throat> specific circumstances where you can't avoid it. So let's make it optional. So to do that, we need to do an if statement and it's a simple if statement you can just use a, a cast uh, if statement to check if the mod is available so in here we have the on activate script that says if the player activates this object do this what if the object isn't there and the mods not available then you do a quick if check so you do if and then you do k object ref that's it if k object ref what that's saying is if that object exists that we've just created then add it to the player we're not creating an object in the world here as well just so you know we're just referencing a weapon base object in our script that once this event is over once this event has gone to the end that won't exist so you're not creating a persistent reference to anything uh, in the game and you won't be doing any save bloat or whatever. This is just something specific for that instance of that function or event at that time. So what you're saying there is if k object ref, so if that mod is available, add it. If you want to be overly cautious, what you can say is if um, if k object ref does not equal none. That's what the exclamation point and the equal sign is. So you, it's basically the say basically the same thing it's saying is that if that reference is there now we'll test that out now and what I'll also do is I'll include a, um, a debug message box so we know mod there dagger added so that will fire if it's there and we'll stick an else in there mod not there sorry
So that's saved. So we'll quickly go into our game to test it. Now as you know from, from earlier, the, the mod is still active in our mod list. So we know that the mod is there, we know that the weapon is part of that mod, so this will work again. But we'll see the debug and then we'll go back, we'll untick the mod so it's not there and we'll see what happens next. Yeah. COC um, script test cell O2 I spelt it wrong didn't I hmm no COC script test so, O2. Oh, there you go. Now, as you can see, the application for this method of obtaining variables and other stuff from other mods will come very handy. So, mod there, dagger added, and we've heard it. We just heard it then, and it's there. Woohoo. Done. But what if that mod isn't there? We don't want to cause a papyrus error, and we don't want to risk, um, risk anything. You might be an overly cautious mod, and you might think, oh, it might, what if it crashes? because it's not there or a user might see it in their papyrus log when their game crashes and go oh your, your mod caused my game to crash because it's there um, chances are it won't this hasn't caused any crashes for me in my tests um, so we'll take off mod 01 so it's not there so the mod we're looking for doesn't exist we'll see what happens now I don't think it causes a papyrus error if it's not there and we're not checking it I don't know if you declare it and it shows but if it does, it certainly won't be an issue. So you don't have to worry about that. I thought I'd have more viewers than this. There's only one. One person's interested in furthering their knowledge within the creation kit boundaries. Disappointing. Script um, test. So, O2. I think I have a lot to say. I think I've got enough to share. I've been modding now for a couple of years. Not as good as some of them out there obviously but you know I do me a bit so we know the mod isn't there now this will pop up and say the mod isn't there and not add the dagger because it doesn't exist it's not active in our mod list mod not there sorry not there done it's exactly what we wanted to do so a method that I um, an application I use for this method is to add something that's optional within one of my own mods so, for example, with hunting in Skyrim, I have another mod called the Woodsman's Shack, which is a, it's a player home out in the woods in the, in the fall forest. I've added things for hunting in Skyrim to that Woodman's Shack, if you have Woodman's Shack available uh, in your mod loader. So people that use that mod with mine have a little extra. Um, someone mentioned as well, it was um, I should say that it was Moist Typewriter from the Bethesda forums, the official forums, that w requested this video. He also mentioned something about um, using SKSE as an optional thing, which I'll show you very quickly. SKSE is very easy to see. Um, I've got it here. You can do something specific, like if you want, like you can say that if it is a specific version of SKSE there. Um, you don't necessarily have to if if you if you just want to say to the user look just use the latest SKSE version otherwise the mod will break. Uh, there are some things in my mod that we're using the old SKSE beta though, so I've I've left it as you need to have the specific version number or above, but you don't need that. You can literally just do this. So I know that I've got SKSE available. So we'll just quickly comment this out. So it works in the same way. To see if SKSE is available, SKSE has a um, has a function called get version, which gets the version number of the Skyrim script extender that the user is using. If they don't have SKSE, this float value here will be zero, nothing, which won't exist. And if it's zero, the float will be nothing. So you could say float f SKSE equals SKSE dot get version. There is an example of this on the creation kit wiki as well. 
and you'll say if that if f skac so if skac is there and let's do a quick debug and we'll do skac version just get it to display in there And this comes in handy if you wanted to use um, SKSE features in your mod, but not make SKSE a requirement. Uh, there's an application for that that I use. Um, it's not always SKSE scripts that you might need to uh, be able to do, but you might not want to know them the way I've done it there. You might want to set a global variable if SKSE is available, so that you can use things like condition functions for quests or perks and things like that. So if SK is available in a quest, um, like on an alias, a condition function you could set to say if SKSC is available, create this alias or whatever. So you could set a global variable there. So you could say if SKSC uh, some global dot um, set value equals one or whatever, and have a global variable property up there. So it'll set that value to one. Um, it goes like that, doesn't it? I don't know why I've just done that. Um, or you could set it to zero if it's not there. So just for the purposes of this, we'll just pop up the version of SKSE that the user's using if they've got it, which I am using SKSE. So let's go. And this will be the last thing I show you. So it's been an interesting 46 minutes. Hopefully it's helped. Hopefully it'll come in handy. Um, it's just a shame that the video quality won't be as good as if I just recorded it. But I will be putting this on my YouTube channel. Um, like I said, the video quality would be a lot better if um, if it wasn't streaming. Which is a shame, but there you go. So, coc script test cell 02. So we'll go to here. And then when we activate this shrine... It should pop up with the version number of what SKSE we are using. So version 1. So um, get version is, uh, let me just explain that in case you're not sure. Ha SKSE has three versions. It has um, functions. It has get version, get version minor, get version beta. So it would be like 1.7.1 .1 or whatever. Um, just for this purposes, we just want to know if SKSC is there. If it's not there, that'll pop up as zero. And yeah, so we know SKSC is there. So now you can do SKSC stuff, funky stuff. And I think that about does it for this tutorial. Hopefully, it's been helpful. Um. It, it opens up a lot of opportunities being able to link scripts together between different mods um, and between different scripts. I will show you very quickly this on one of my scripts. If you want to link two scripts together in the same mod, you literally just add it as a property in the same way we were casting it before. So you do the name in, your, in the top of your script or the bottom, wherever you put your properties. You do the name of the actual script. You'd say property and then what you want to call it and then auto. And then what you'd do is go into um, into the object in the creation kit, so say the quest, open up the script properties window, and then that, that property name will be there, and then you can choose from a drop-down menu um, what that script is attached to. It will automatically fill that with whatever that script is attached to. So say that script name is attached to 10 things in the game, it will bring a drop-down of those 10 things, so you can select which one you want to look at. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully it's been helpful. If you've got any other questions about the um, the creation kit or anything, uh, you've got the creation kit wiki to look at. It's, um, I think, just Google creation kit wiki, you'll find it. There's the official Bethesda forums. They've got a creation kit section. Um, or just message me on Twitter or Steam or whatever. Um, Big Bad Daddy with a one. And, yeah, if you're interested in gaming at all, and we do, uh, my community does a weekly podcast on g4te.com. Uh, there's a link on my uh, window on my panels on Twitch. Um, we do a weekly podcast called The Overseas Connection and we're a good bunch of guys. It's a, it's a laugh and we do competitions. We're currently giving away a load of strategy games. So yeah, um, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and um, I'll speak to you soon. Take care.